is the Big O Show. All right, we are ready. Our number three on the program. Coming to you live, baby, from High Aaliyah Park. And there he is, ready to go for EJDconstruction.com, Miami Dolphins report. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? No, I can't complain. How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, you uh, look at uh, the injuries. What can you tell us? Any good news? What's uh, what's your gut tell you about some of these injuries? No, I actually think it's going to be pretty good this weekend. Uh, Raheem Mostar is back at practice today, which was very, very encouraging because you see him pop up on the injury report with DNP knee, considering his history. That's always worrisome, you know, regardless of what it is. Um, so he was back at practice today. That's very, very encouraging. Well, and he had 18 carries. You know, when when I had Cam on in the post game, he was like, "Well, maybe they should have run more." I said, "Man, I know. Dude, I, I, I had 18 carries on a knee. That you know, he's coming back. I think 18 carries is more than enough for him. You know, it's just nobody else could really get it going uh, on that day." No, correct. And then I think also like like the Jets at some point adjusted a little bit too. Um, so no, I had I had no problem with his with his workload. I think eighteen carries is actually a very good number for him. Yeah. Um, my gut feeling, based on what Mike McDaniel said about Teron Armstead coming back from New York after seeing a specialist, there was no indication that there's anything major going on with that. He was talking about how it's going to be another one of those deals where he's going to work through the work through the week behind the scenes, not at practice, and then try to play on Sunday. So that's more encouraging than it was right after the game on Sunday when the news is he's going to go see the specialist, see what they can do. It might, certainly sounds like they're in a holding pattern and going to keep doing the same deal. Uh, X certainly looks like he's going to be out there. He's practiced the last the, the last two days. So, uh, and – Based on what I've seen, what my eyeballs tell me, I kind of get the feeling Austin Jackson is going to be back as well. So I Really? Think, yeah, I think injury-wise, it's actually looking a, about as good as it can look considering where we were on Sunday. Wow, so no Byron is the only one. You think everybody else is pretty much playing, right? Yeah, you, certainly, yeah. That certainly looks that way. Uh, Durham Smythe, I think, might be, might be problematic. Okay. All right. But, and I mean, the grand scheme of things, that if they have X and they have Teron Armstead, uh, yeah. no offense to Durham Smythe, but I think I, I'll take that trade off. No, definitely, definitely. And he's solid. I like Durham Smythe. Right. No, I, I like him too. It's always good to have him as an option there. And especially for, for a young quarterback, because as you know, uh, running backs and tight ends, those are higher percentage passes uh, right. for those guys than, than getting it to the outside uh, overall. All right. Uh, the challenge this week. With Skylar Thompson, um, I, I think it's better at least for the coach to be able to prepare him for the week, uh, at least, you know, because we all talk about how Skylar will be better off having a week of preparation, which is obvious, and we all know that. But also on the flip side, it's also better for the coach, too, that he gets the game plan with the young man all throughout yeah. the week so he kind of gets a feel for what he's comfortable with and what he's not as comfortable with. Yeah, no question. And even as I mentioned earlier, and Daryl Bevel again said it today, you cannot underestimate the significance of Thompson getting all the first team reps this week in preparation for his start, as opposed to jumping in after one offensive play against the Jets. And even with that, like I wrote earlier this week, I thought he was perfectly fine against against the Jets. 19 for 33 is not impressive, but there were four drops. And the one pick was when he had his arm hit. So right. uh, I thought he was actually was very, very, very solid, a lot better than a lot of uh, other Dolphin quarterbacks making their first start. Uh, and I wrote about that actually earlier today. Um, and so he, he was actually did a good job. I'm with you there. Um, all right. Uh, the Tua stuff. Does it look to you, because this is what it looks like to me, we now found out that the spotter, when he does this, he screws your player for two weeks, basically. Yeah. Because that's what's going on. So the Dolphins also figured that out and said, well, we better get Tua doing what Teddy's doing this week 
so we have them available for next week. Because if we don't, then next week will be the week that we initially start the process with him, and he's not allowed to play that week, basically, because he doesn't really get to prepare nearly as much. Like Teddy is not getting to prepare nearly as much. So all of a sudden now, you kind of get the feel that they're doing this to get him ready for Pittsburgh next week. Agree or disagree on that? No, apples and oranges. I think it's two separate situations. Um, yeah, Teddy got screwed by by the new rule. Um, and it's application. And then to me, it still boggles the mind that unless, unless there's something there that I don't know, the fact that there could be one spotter who decides, yeah, he looks wobbly to me, you're out. Uh, and then you can't practice. That you know, sucks. Even on a limited basis until the next Thursday. Yeah, that's that's not kosher. And when right. with, with Tua, to, to me, Tua, it, again, it's a separate situation because uh, he's at the stage now where, where when, he, when he clears certain uh, milestones. Bench, benchmarks. Benchmarks. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Uh, you know, he can increase his workload. and. Well, that's why. If you started next week. It may not be. It they, may wouldn't not able to start him now. they wouldn't have been able to start him now if he was if he hadn't clinched a bench, benchmark of okay, you're okay to start to start throwing lightly or say this to start practicing on a limited basis and all that. Uh, you, don't, you, you don't think he he could have cleared last week? Come on, man. No, no, I don't actually. I think he I think he could have played last week. Okay, and I think he could have played last week. They just, yeah, of course, yeah, they're going through the whole thing. The guy got the guy got concussed in the Buffalo game and played in the second half. Brilliantly, correct. So, but then I mean, now you're talking about it. If we're if we're going with that assumption, then now you're talking about a second concussion, with, and the second one being a lot worse than the first one. Um, yeah. No, I mean that was a bad but, one. But I'm also what I'm what I'm trying to tell you is I think he's one of those guys that gets through this kind of stuff quickly. Um, unfortunately, Seathing Carter is not. It's just the way it is. You know what I mean? It's like I've said before. Look at Dave yeah. Navarro. Dave Navarro for a year and a half has had long COVID. He can't taste or smell. Now, many other people got COVID and it went through him like a cold. Look at Dave Navarro. Unfortunately, he, Jane's addiction is benched. Can't do anything because he's he's sidelined for a year and a half already. How crazy is that? But that, I think that's how it is. I, to me, he looks like the kind of dude that gets through these kind of things quickly. Fortunately for him, at least, what it seems like. Um, okay. I, 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 I know we have no proof or anything, like correct. medical was, proof and all that, good, but, but I, go, I, I go off of Buffalo where, you know, he's just – he looked at me just fine, and he got concussed on that one. It okay, but nice. there's, also, there's also a different – there's different levels of concussions, and, and the Buffalo thing was probably a very mild concussion. Yeah. And then the, 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 the Bengals – hit was not a mild concussion so no. i don't know again i no i don't know i don't think that tour could have played against the jets even even for even without optics even without extra precaution and all that um it looks encouraging for pittsburgh but again it's concussions and to me the idea is to, to suggest that yeah he's not definitely playing against pittsburgh is silly uh it it does look promising let's put it that way you didn't think the ping pong tables were something that was really going to stop them from winning, right? That's not. Uh, that's not. And by the way, I heard that the new table that that um, Tyreek is buying, yeah. it's going to have a, a chair in the middle for a referee. And I heard Marcel is has been voted in to be the referee. I don't know if you heard about this, but no, yeah, I it's a really that. elaborate table. It's so elaborate it needs a referee. And Marcel is going to be the referee sitting in the uh, the little chair in between the uh, the ping pong. I don't know if you know about this, but no, I figured it'd have a, a, like a non like a referee, like an yeah. electronic referee. I mean, uh, no, really, really high tech. Oh well, no, no, they they wanted somebody objective out of the locker room, so they voted Marcel. Okay. And I think it was something about him wearing Bill's underwear, so he won't be choosing sides or something like that. I don't know what it is. Something like that is uh, it's. That's the rumor floating around there. I think that's what I heard. You'd have to ask Marcel. I'm. I'm. I'm well, we did. We we asked him. He he just he 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 didn't deny it, but he didn't want to confirm it. Okay, so I, so. you you know how it is. You know I, how it goes. I don't know how that works. Sor sources say. Sources say, and he just we caught him, we busted him, and he just you know he he had a little hard time admitting that he's going to be refereeing the ping pong matches. Yeah. So, or do you take part in any of these? Are you any good at ping pong? 
Were you ever any good at ping pong? I can hold my own. You can? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. pretty good. I suck at it. Dude. I never got good at that. Never, dude. God bless. That thing was... Uh, I, every time I'd hit it, it'd just end up in the other part of the room or something like that. It was just... I, I just couldn't hit it to the other box on the other side. I just didn't have that touch. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is rough. All right, what are you uh, what are you predicting this week uh, between uh, the Dolphins and the Vikings? What do you think? I think they're going to win. I, I, and and the Vikings are a really really wacky team. I mean, because I, I heard actually somebody call the Raiders today like one of the best one and four teams I've ever seen. And to me, I look at the Vikings and they're one of the worst four and one teams I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> they, they, they always seem like they could be, they should be better than they are. Uh, there's an awful lot of talent on both sides of the ball on that team. I mean, big time. Um, Spielman but, did a good job there, dude. It's just, he couldn't figure out the quarterback and that's, you know, a lot of people have trouble figuring out the quarterback, but overall he did a pretty good job throughout his tenure there of drafting. Oh, no, I, I no, I agree. And then, but, and, but cousins is one of those weird guys. I mean, he's weird. It's like, he can be really, really, really good, and then he shrinks at the bad moments. And I, I kind of get the feeling this is the game where maybe, where maybe the pass rush actually gets to him because he's not a threat to, to scramble. Um, where, where the hell is that pass rush? Mm. Are those guys, do they plan on showing up anytime this year? One sack each for Jalen Phillips and Emmanuel Ogba, as I wrote earlier today, that I'm that not going to get it done. Um, but I kind of get the feeling that the defense is due for a good game, that it's going to happen. And, and I think the offense is, is going to, is going to be solid. It's not going to be explosive, but I think it's going to be solid. And that, yeah, I, I think that's the game the Dolphins actually can win. I, I hope so, man, because wow, they, and, and one of the keys that, that defense, that, that those defensive ends, they've got to get freed up, dude. They've got to find a way to, to to hit that quarterback and sack him. It, it's just – and look, I get it with Jalen Phillips because he's young. So this is the kind of crap that happens with young defensive ends. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, some people are losing their minds with Jalen. I'm not because he's young. So that's fine. And, right. and you right. made a good point. And you made a good point earlier in the week that, you know, his sacks actually came in bunches mm -hmm. and against some of the lesser teams actually at times. Yep. Where, where he was able to take advantage. So this is part of his growing pains. But Emmanuel Agba, there are no excuses, my man. You're yep. a veteran. You played your ass off for your contract. You got your contract. Let's go, bro. Let's go. It's time to produce. And and he's not getting it done. And by him producing, he will then open it up for Jalen Phillips. But if he's not yep. producing, it's going to make Jalen's job just a little bit harder. No, no, no question. And and I looked at Agba's like season so far. I mean, he was great against Buffalo, but and and, and he had good numbers against New England. The other three games, and it's like it, it, the numbers. I mean, there's not, forget forget sacks. He's only got one sack on the season. But even quarterback hits where you're affecting the QB because that's it's not just when we talk about the pass rush not being there. It's not just about sacks. That's great and all that, but it's hurrying some throws, causing yeah. incompletions because you get in the QB's face. And yes. that's just not been there. And it was there the last two years. And that's made a big difference. I'm with you there, man. I, I hope uh, I hope the uh, the D line uh, wakes up in this game. It would be nice because Cousins is the kind of guy that you just talked about. You can rattle him. And, uh, and that's your job there this week is to rattle him. And you're home. So hopefully the, the sun and the defense, you know, get to them uh, a little bit more. All right. Um, what else? Uh, I, don't think, I think we got pretty much uh, everything uh, overall. Uh, would you, oh, from here on out, are you worried that this rule will cause problems for this league? Because it seems to me like some teams are going to end up losing games because of this. Maybe a team ends up losing a playoff position because of this. Maybe some players don't break records because of this. Maybe they don't reach incentives because of some of these calls by the spotter. Yeah. How concerned are you that this rule will put a, a, a put an effect into what football is all about now? Yeah, and, and there's two, there's two big issues now with with quarterbacks and the league in general that, that that popped up this weekend. Number one is the roughing the passer penalties. I think those will dissipate as the weeks move on. I, th I think like the 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 Grady Jarrett call against Tom Brady 
that call's not being made three or four weeks down the road. I think that was a gross overreaction to the Tua situation. Chris Jones? You know what? I, I'll be honest with you. And, in fact, the officiating – I, I saw somewhere today where an officiating said uh, – official said that even after review, he still would have called it because technically he landed on top of him and because of that silly rule that really offers no gray area, he fell on top of him with his with his weight, um, which he did. And, unfortunately, I think that rule's in there and that, that's still going to get called. But the one like the Grady Jarrett against Tom Brady, you're not getting that call three weeks down the road because that situation will have again faded a little bit. The thing with the the the, the spotter being able to rule out somebody from a game, unfortunately, now that's it. that's in the in the rule uh, in the rule book or in the the protocols, whatever it's in writing. That's not going away, and I think that's going to cause problems at some point for a team. And it'd be nice if it was a team other than the Dolphins. Uh, to which it happened. Uh, by the way, uh, somebody wants to ask, but I might as well ask because he is from here. Um, should the Dolphins, Cap for Life is asking, Alan Orlando, I'm driving with one knee while texting and asking, do you guys think we should try to trade with Carolina for Brian Burns? Is he available? The why American Carolina, Heritage uh, Star? Brian Burns. Huh? I under, why would Carolina trade Brian Burns? I understand. I understand they're going to be in full rebuild mode, but you have a few good, really, really good young assets. Brian Burns being one of them, Derek Brown being another one, J.C. Horn being another one. Why would you, if you're Carolina, get rid of all your long, your young building pieces? I, I don't. Uh, that the fans just, you know, sometimes oh, think that. You know, they, everybody's available and anything and all that. There are no reports that Brian Burns is going to be traded. None whatsoever. Correct. No, if Carolina uh, trades I, I, somebody, I, think, I think it was Washington, right? Some guy came out of Washington and said, I want out or something. That's about it, right? That's about yeah, the William only Jackson, one. The corner yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yes. Um, that's it. No, I mean, yeah, I can see Carolina giving up Christian McCaffrey because he's got he's injury got a problem. contract yeah. and he's always hurt. Yeah. Or, yeah. And and I I saw some people like suggesting why don't the Dolphins call Carolina for Taylor Moton or Moton however you pronounce his last name the right tackle who's very good who also got a massive contract uh, last year and if you look at the salary cap implications for Carolina to trade him they take this ridiculous cap hit so they're not they're not they'd be crazy to do that so you got to look at those things when you talk about okay who who could they acquire and they don't all- look at that. No, like it's, it. no, it's all great. It's all about okay, who couldn't the Dolphins get from that? Well, right. it's just they, they, pull, some, they pull a question out of their ass and they have no idea if it makes any sense whatsoever or whatsoever. So Cap for Life just pulls it out of his ass. Hey, why don't we trade for Brian Burns? Okay. There he's on his rookie deal. They he's a hell of a player. That would help them actually lure their next coach. Why would they want to do that now? Correct. You know well, what I'm saying? I appreciate the enthusiasm. I'll say that. I'm like, I'm not gonna rip on the guy. That's that's cool. Uh, oh, that's my job. But you, that's my job. Well, but you got to look at both sides. I mean, it's like, you know? it's come on. Man. Let's talk about somebody that actually is on the trading block. Somebody that's legitimately wants out, or or they're trading them, or something like that. But you know, let's just call somebody for their better players, and you know, that's it. And the best part is, Cap for Life will probably follow up. I know we can get them for a fifth rounder. In 2038, you know, it's, it's it might be a might cost a fourth actually. Come on, maybe yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. They might it might be a tough negotiation yeah. there. All right, what are you working on on alldolphins.com, the site that every dolphin fan on the planet must bookmark? Well, I kind of threw a hint out there that I did something like uh, deep diving into the defensive issues that have crept up the same the same defense that we saw last year and. As I mentioned, it's not just – yes, Byron Jones not being there is a factor. It's not just Byron Jones. There are other issues at play. Um, one that I, I didn't mention because it's not really the defense itself, but the special teams have been shit. Let's be honest. They've been shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty much the whole year. And that's not, that hasn't helped. Uh, and if you if you don't think that's think, a big deal – By the way, I think they renamed them to shit teams, not special. I think they did that, actually. Yeah. I think no, if look, you go look, look at the media at, at the media guide right now. It'll say shit teams, not special teams. No, yeah. dude, look look at the game Sunday. 
And the Dolphins' first two possessions, the first one they started on the eight, that led to the safety. The second time they had the ball, Skyler Thompson comes in. We talked about difficult circumstances. He's got the ball at his three-yard line. Go ahead, go ahead, Rooks. Make your NFL debut starting at the three-yard line. Right. Um, so that's been another factor. And also I, I look at a uh, little revisiting Dolphin quarterbacks, Dolphin draft picks who were quarterbacks in their first start with Miami. Okay. Uh, there you go. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that's an interesting one there. <laughs> All right. Follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL. And again, if you're a Dolphins fan, it's 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 a must. You really don't become an official Dolphins fan until you bookmark AllDolphins.com. It's the law. Okay, as uh, Nino Brown would say, it's the law. Alan, have fun. We will catch up on Monday after the game. Let's uh, let's hope we're talking about a win. A hell of a lot more fun. Talking hell of a lot more. Win. Yep, no question. Have a great weekend, bud. Thank you, sir. And, of course, EJD Construction. They are a proud sponsor of our program. Not a handyman. We're talking about full custom home construction. And, listen, a couple of our listeners have called EJD Construction because uh, they're having issues with their roof. It's not that there's anything wrong with the roof. It's old. And unfortunately, the insurance companies are not renewing a lot of homes in South Florida that the, the roof is too old and you need to upgrade it. Well, EJD Construction can upgrade it for you. Custom home construction, major home remodeling. You want to build a second floor, a third floor. You want to build a, an observation deck, which, by the way, as somebody else also built that, an observation deck on top of their roof, which is really, really cool idea. I'd like to get a balcony out of my uh, bedroom in the second floor. That's what I'd like to do. But you can do that with EJD Construction, 305-433-4843, fully insured. Liability and workers' comp, so you never have to worry. Anybody gets injured on your property, you are not going to get sued. Do not ever hire somebody to work on your property that is not fully insured. That is very dangerous because you will be held responsible if they get injured. Hire people that are properly licensed and insured ejd construction 305-433-4843 that's the ejdconstruction.com miami dolphins report this is the big O show This is the Big O Show!